Welcome to Sewing Anastasia, and today we are gonna make a half circle skirt with a side seam zipper, a waist facing, and a bias facing at the hem. You are gonna learn so much when you make this super cute half circle skirt. This tutorial also has a pattern for it, and it comes in sizes zero through 38, and you can download it through my site. There'll be a link down below in the description. This skirt is great for the beginner and intermediate sewer out there. We are going to be going over some intermediate skills like the invisible zipper and facings and bias facings. This is a classic pattern that you can make out of just about any fabric. It is great for all seasons. Wool or corduroy for fall, cotton or linen for spring, summer, or maybe some fancy brocade and lace for a special event. Real quick, before we start, if you guys wanna learn more about sewing, make sure you check out my online sewing classes and my sewing club. There's gonna be a link down below in the description for those. And if you've been enjoying my videos, make sure you like and subscribe to Sewing Anastasia and hit the notification bell so you know when the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. So come on, let's go make this skirt and you're gonna learn some things along the way. The first thing you wanna do is download your pattern. There's gonna be a link down below in the description or head over to sewingastasia.com to download your pattern. Once you've printed out your pattern on your home printer and taped it together or send it to a copy shop to have a large format version printed, let's find your waist measurement on the size chart. And that's the only measurement you're going to need for this because the hip measurement is free. And by free, I just mean that the garment is not going to be sitting tight on your hips. It's going to be free moving away from your hips. You're gonna find your waist measurement in the chart right here. And then you're going to cut out this corresponding size. So I'm right here at the 26, so I'm going to be cutting out a size four today. And the cool thing about these patterns is that they're layered PDF. So if you find your size before you print it, you can print just your size. You don't have to print out all of the sizes. Now that you've found your size in the pattern, you're gonna cut out the skirt and the facing. That's right, this pattern is only two pieces. Now I'm gonna cut out my paper pattern with my paper rotary cutter. Now that we have our paper pattern cut out, let's go over the supplies you're going to need to make this half circle skirt. You're going to need about a yard and a half of fabric and I'm going to be using this super cool retro vintage 70s weave here. You're also gonna need a little bit of interfacing for the facing, about a quarter yard, and I suggest a 12 inch long invisible zipper. Now for the hem, I'm going to be putting on a bias facing so I have some bias tape here. This step is optional. Now that we're all set with our pattern and our supplies, it's time to cut out our skirt. Before we start cutting, I just wanna mention that if you would like to make your skirt longer, you just need to add to the hem here. So let's say you wanted it three inches longer. You tape on some paper and mark out three inches evenly across the entire hem and then your skirt would be three inches longer. Maybe you wanted a maxi skirt. Maybe you want it two feet longer. You would mark out two feet evenly matching the existing hem, and then you will have the skirt the length you desire. As you're placing your pattern on the fabric, take notice that the pattern has this little fold indication telling you that you need to make sure your fabric is folded and you're placing the pattern over to that fold right on top of it. This is going to open up after we cut it out and give us a nice big piece. Now, the pattern also says cut two on fold, so you need to do this twice. And then the same thing with the facing here. You're gonna cut out two facing pieces on fold. Now that it's all cut out, let's take a look at the pieces you should also have cut out. I have two skirt panels here, they are identical. I also have two waist facing pieces up here, which are identical. And then I have two waist interfacing pieces, which are identical as well. Next, we're gonna fuse our interfacing to our facing. So let's head over to the ironing board. Make sure you have the bumpy side of your fusible interfacing going towards the wrong side of the fabric. Line up your pieces and fuse them down. And just like that, our interfacing is fused to our fabric. Next, it's time to finish all the edges on the pieces. So you could serge it, you could zigzag it, you could overcast it, you could bias bind your edges. There are a lot of different options there. Today, I'm going to be serging all of my edges except the hem because I'm going to add a bias facing later to the hem. If you're not going to be adding a bias facing, go ahead and finish your hem edge. We're gonna finish all of these edges because we don't want our project to fall apart when we're washing it and wearing it. Time to start serging. All done. So we have all of our edges surged and they're looking great. 
Now grab your invisible zipper and we're going to put it in on the left side. But wait, the skirt is the same front and back, so it actually doesn't matter what side you put the zipper on. When you wear it though, you're gonna wanna wear it on the left. And you might be thinking, but what about the top of the skirt? Well, this piece here is actually going to be on the inside of the skirt. It's a facing piece. So when you have a facing, you put your zipper in and then add the facing. If we had a waistband, we would put the waistband on and then the zipper. To start the zipper, we are going to unzip it and we're gonna flip it to the right side of the garment. And when you do this, you should end up with your twill tape at the edge of your fabric and the teeth of the zipper should be towards the inside of the garment. And now we have a half inch seam allowance at the top of our waist for our facing. So we wanna make sure that that little plastic nub on the zipper is a half inch away from the top of our skirt. Now let's head over to the sewing machine and go over how to put the zipper in in detail so you get beautiful invisible zippers. So I have my multi-purpose zipper foot on and I've moved my needle position all the way to the left. Now for this first step, I just want you to concentrate on lining up the zipper tape with the edge of the fabric here. This time around, we're not worried about getting as close to the teeth as we can. We just want to get the zipper to the fabric. You can choose to backstitch or not. Either way, this is just to hold it in place. Now we're gonna come all the way back up to the top. And now this time we're gonna try and get as close to the teeth as we can. So you take the zipper and you roll it open to the left and you're going to see this little groove inside there. And we wanna sew right in that little groove. So start towards the top. Make sure it's moving and then engage your back stitch. Add a few back stitches and then continue down. Now, while I'm doing this, I like to hold open the teeth. So I'm going to keep the teeth open and sew all the way down. I want to sew right in that little groove next to the teeth. You might see some instructions telling you to iron those teeth open. I suggest not doing that. It actually molds them out of place. Now come down as far as you can when the zipper pull gets in the way, I want you to back stitch. And now we're gonna do the other side. But first, let's zip it up and see if we got close enough. So when you zip up, your fabric should be to the center of the zipper. If you can still see zipper tape on this side, you need to get a little closer. Now that we have this side of the zipper fully sewn on, it's time to do the other side. So the way I want you to look at this is make sure that the zipper is right side face up. And now we're gonna take the right side of the zipper tape and we're gonna flip it to the right side of the fabric, which means we're going to take this entire skirt and flip it over so that way the zipper tape is on this side. And again, we need to unzip it when we sew it down. We'll just fold that out of the way there. And now we wanna make sure that that zipper tape is right on the edge of the fabric. And we're just gonna run that first initial stitch down to hold it in place. And then we're gonna do the same thing where we roll open the teeth and stitch right in that little groove. Before we do the other side, we wanna switch our foot to the right-hand side and move our needle position all the way over to the right. And again, we're just sewing the zipper tape to the fabric right now. We're not worrying about getting super close. Come down as far as you can and back stitch. Now we're gonna zip up the zipper and make sure that we sewed close enough to the teeth and that our zipper is looking invisible. Ooh, look at that. That is a beautiful invisible zipper. Now we still have this big opening at the bottom of the skirt, so now we're gonna sew this up. So we're going to take the skirts and we're gonna place them right sides together. You want to line up your seam. We can even pin it together here. We want that to stay aligned. And then we're gonna leave the same foot on in the same position. We're gonna keep this zipper tail out of the way. You do not wanna sew that into the seam right now. And now we're gonna start where we left off up here, about a half inch up. 
We're going to backstitch and then we're going to continue sewing all the way down to the bottom of the skirt. We're going to backstitch and continue all the way down. Don't forget to backstitch at the bottom. Our last step here is sewing down the zipper tail. So we have these loose zipper tails. So what we're going to do is pull back our seam allowance and we're going to sew the zipper tail just to the seam allowance. You don't want to leave it flat and sew through the entire skirt because you're going to see that on the outside. And this is an invisible zipper, so we want to keep it invisible. So we're just going to pull back that seam allowance and sew that bottom one inch of the zipper tail to the seam allowance. We're going to make sure that we are adding our back stitches at the beginning and the end of this. We are just sewing the zipper tail to that seam allowance. Once I do one side, I take the skirt and I flip it around. So now I'm starting at the bottom coming up, making sure I'm just stitching through that seam allowance. Now we've completed our zipper. Let's check it out. From the outside of the skirt, your invisible zipper should look something like this. And when we turn it over, the inside of your zipper should look something like this. Next, we're gonna sew up the side seam and the side seam of the facing. We're going to sew up the short side on the facing on the right hand side with a half inch seam allowance. And then we're also gonna sew together the side seam here on the skirt with a half inch seam allowance. I have my fabric lined up at the half inch point and I'm ready to sew this plain seam. We're gonna add a few stitches forward. We're going to add our back stitches to make it nice and secure. And then we're going to guide our fabric all the way down to the bottom of our skirt. Take out your pins before you get to them. And when you get to the end, add your back stitches. I always like to end at the edge of my fabric and cut. Now it's time to sew the side of that facing together. Our skirt is really starting to come together. Now it's time to add the facing. To add the facing to the waist of the skirt, we're going to open the zipper, we're gonna lay the zipper flat. We're gonna put the facing all the way to the edge of the zipper tape. And we're gonna place the top edge of the facing with the top edge of the skirt, and we're gonna pin these two layers together, going all the way around the waist. And we wanna make sure that we line up the side seam of the skirt with the side seam of the facing. So when we get to the side seam here, we're just going to make sure that these two line up. And then again, when you get back to that other side of the zipper, the zipper is flat and we're taking the facing piece and it's going over the zipper on top of the zipper. And then after you have this all pinned together, we're going to sew it down with a half inch seam allowance. I also want to mention that you need to be pinning the short side of the curve to the waist. That longer curved edge is for the bottom of the facing. Now let's go sew it. So I've edged my fabric lined up with my half inch for that half inch seam allowance. We're going to take out the pins before we get to them and just work our way all the way around the waist. When you get to your side seam, make sure both sides are laying nice and flat. You want that seam pressed open. It's going to reduce the bulk there at that side seam. When you get to the bottom, add your back stitches and cut it. Now let's take a look at our waist facing seam and then go over that next step, adding the understitch. 
So we have our seam here on both sides and it is coming over the zipper. Now what we're going to end up doing is folding back the facing and we're going to sew the seam allowance to the facing and we're going to do this from the right side we're going to sew about an eighth of an inch away from the seam now if you have a really bulky fabric here because this is a bit of a curve you can clip into it just don't clip past your seam if you have a thin fabric it's probably going to flip just fine but adding a few clips there is just going to help reduce some of the tension with this curve before you add your understitch, you should zip up your zipper and make sure that this waist seam here is lining up on both sides. And if it's not, now is the time to fix that. So I'm stitching on the facing side. We're gonna add our back stitches. And make sure you have that seam allowance towards the facing side as well. And now we're just gonna work our way all the way around the waist here. And when you get towards the end, don't forget to add your back stitches. And cut. Now we're gonna take the facing and we're gonna fold it on top of the zipper tape here. Make sure you're folding at the seam and not the understitch. It naturally wants to fold at the understitch. So we're gonna pull that whole piece down and then we're going to stitch just right outside that serge there. So you want to stitch about a quarter inch away from the edge. And we're going to go through all the layers. So you're going through the zipper tape, your facing, and your skirt fabric. You'll notice I also put back on my all-purpose zipper foot to make it nice and easy to sew on the side of the zipper here. And my needle position is center. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. And by doing that, look at how nice the facing looks right next to the zipper. It wraps around that edge beautifully. And the top of our zipper looks beautiful too. The last step for making sure your facing is secure is by tacking down the other side seam. So we can stitch in the ditch to go through all the layers, or we can pull back the facing and grab the two pieces of seam allowance and tack them together. I'm going to be stitching in the ditch for this one. So I'm on the outside of the garment and I have my foot lined up right in that seam there. I am going to add a few back stitches for this process. Keep it nice and secure. And I'm just going to come down to the bottom of the facing, which I can feel under this top layer here. So the bottom of the facing ends there. So I'm going to add my few back stitches and I can cut. And now our facing is going to be nice and secure. And look, you can't even see that stitch in the ditch. It is securely in that seam there. This is a great use of this technique. Now to make sure I'm always putting my skirt on so the zipper's on the left, I'm going to add a little garment tag to the back facing. Now if you don't have a garment tag, you could always add a little piece of ribbon or trim or put a little decorative stitch there or something. Just so that way when you're getting dressed, it's just a little bit easier to know where that zipper goes. So I'm going to be sewing it on the back of the facing, that zipper on the left, and I'm going to lift up the facing and we're just sewing it through the facing layer and I'm going to sew it on the right and the left. And now my adorable little tag is sewn into the back of my skirt. Now one more finishing touch you can add to the waist is putting a hook and eye right behind the zipper. This is always great to have on a garment because you hook and eye it and then you zip it up. It really helps you get into the garment with ease. And if you are going to add a hook and eye, it goes right below the waist, right behind the back of the zipper pull. Now it's time to hem our skirt. Now you have options here. You could just do that single folded hem. You could do a blind hem. You could do a little baby rolled hem. You could add some hem tape. You could bias bind it. Today, I'm going to be adding a bias facing to the hem. Now, I know I talk about this a lot as in hem options, so today, I'm going to add it. To add the bias facing to the hem, we're going to take the right side of the bias tape and put it on the right side of the fabric. I have store-bought bias binding, so I'm going to open up that first crease, and I'm going to fold back the edge to line up with my side seam here. So I have a nice clean folded edge here, and I have the raw edge of the binding lining up with the raw edge of the skirt. And when I stitch, I'm going to be stitching about a quarter inch away from that bottom edge. When you get back to where you started, 
You want to make sure that you're overlapping the binding on that folded piece of binding that you started with. We're going to overlap it about a half inch and then we're done with that first step. And then after we stitch all the way around the skirt, we're going to end up taking the whole entire piece of binding and flipping it to the inside and stitching it down so we have a nice clean finish on the inside of our skirt. We have finished our hem and it is looking beautiful. Let's take a look at that bias faced hem. On the outside, we have a stitch and then on the inside, we have that beautiful bias tape creating our bias facing. Now that we've finished the skirt, let's go over all the details and all the things you learned creating the skirt. Through the process of creating this half circle skirt, you've learned how to attach a facing with an invisible zipper, how important that little under stitch is, finishing our edges, attaching the bottom of the zipper tails on the zipper. We added our cute little tag, we did our stitch in the ditch, and we finished off the skirt with a beautiful bias faced hem. And now it's time to try it on. And here's our new half circle skirt. I just love it. It's so easy to wear. It's super comfortable. The only fit in it is in the waist, so it flares out over the hips. So it has a super flirty swing to it. The skirt is super versatile and easy to wear. I can definitely see myself making it up out of a wool or corduroy for winter and a fancy fabric for the holidays coming up. This skirt is a real wardrobe staple and I hope you choose to add it to your closet. And don't forget, this pattern comes in sizes 0 through 38 and you can download it through the link down below in the description. Thanks so much for watching Soe Anastasia today. If you have any questions about making this half circle skirt, leave it down below and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. And I would love to know what kind of fabric you think you would make it out of. Leave that down below too. And don't forget, if you're in Chicago, come on into my studio and take some classes with me. And if you're not, well, make sure you check out the Online Sewing Academy and my sewing circle, which is virtual, and you can join the Discord through that. Links are down below in the description for all of those. And if you want some more sewing action, well, make sure you follow me on Instagram and check out those stories because I'm always posting what's going on in the studio there. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.